my favorite perfume is um by Rito. Thank you. How do you keep going and staying on your routine? Um, well, that's why I created my ebook. So in the ebook, I clearly like in the beginning say that, you know, starting a routine is very hard. Like staying consistent is so hard. That was one of my biggest things is being consistent with one thing because I was like going here, doing this, doing that, doing that. But if you actually wake up on a routine and like really like stick to um what you're doing it just becomes like your life it becomes a lifestyle and you make it into a lifestyle so for me like waking up like not going on instagram right away and praying is number one and then from there you start your day you know you download the bible app from the bible app you read your scripture because you're not gonna want to you know some people might not want to go get their bible and go read the bible early in the morning so you have that's why we have technology and you have the Bible app. So you just read a scripture from there and then you, you know, play some worship music while you're in the shower, washing your face, brushing your teeth, listen to some gospel, you know what I'm saying? Like get in your spirit, like whatever. Just get in your vibe. You can't nobody tell you how to spend your time with him. You know what I'm saying? Like and can't nobody tell you how to pray like there's no right or wrong way on how to pray you just talk like me i just talk like sometimes i cry sometimes i scream sometimes i'm normal you know what i'm saying and calm like so um yeah like that's so to answer your question how you be consistent it's just creating a routine for yourself and being obedient to that so and once you put them first like you said everything will fall into place hey um, I don't have any friends, really. I only have a few. Um, you know, I never really had, a, like, too many friends anyway. And I had a lot of, like, falling outs with people and things like that. So, like, I'm actually okay. Like, I have a, a circle of people that I call my, like, sisters or my friends. And they all accept my journey. And, um, you know, but I would like to meet some more Christian friends that, you know, go to church and do bible study and do things like that so i have like a community of people around me which i have a few right now so um it's super important that you surround yourself around that because it'll just become you know part of y'all's part of y'all's conversation so and i'm not saying like out the whole day you have to talk about god like no like but just somebody that is on the same vibration with you and will do things you know and people also need to know like being in, like living a christian life is like people have to like normalize that we're human like i want people to know that like it is okay to wake up and make mistakes like you're gonna wake up and sin sometimes like you can't control you can't control i'm like but sometimes we make mistakes and none of us are perfect so it's like you might wake up and decide okay, I might drink today or I might smoke some weed today. Are we living in sin? Yes. Does that mean to take a, advantage of that? No. Does that mean every day start sinning, 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 and then ask God, oh, forgive me? No. Like, you don't do that. But it's okay to be normal and be human. It's okay to live a normal life. It's okay to still go out and carry yourself a certain way. Like, if you want to go club, that's on you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm me personally, I don't want to be in certain environments, you know, because those are my triggers. Do I go to, like, restaurants and lounges? Yes. I'll still go to restaurants and lounges because I'm human. I still need to breathe. I still need to, you know. But. Yep. Yeah. Like, people got to, like, normalize being human. So, like, I was out. I was smoking hookah, like, maybe, like, two weeks ago. Like, and I went out to smoke hookah and eat dinner. And I didn't have no liquor. And, I know, like, you know, people were just staring at me. Like, I look, I had, like, ten heads. Like, okay, what? I'm not supposed to be here now. Like, you know what I'm saying? So, I just want that to be to realize that you're human. And you can, like, still do certain stuff. It's just the way you carry yourself about stuff. So. Yes, I still smoke hookah. Do I drink liquor? No. I just said today was 
April 1st is four months in the liquor. So. Yes. It's a process. That's why it's called a journey. A journey is not something that, like, you do and then, boom, you're done. It's going to be trials and tribulations through the whole thing. One day at a time. And on my foot, I have tatted. I want you guys to see. On my foot, it says, one step at a time. Just what it says on my foot. And I got this when I was 17 years old. So. One step at a time. No, my journey is mine for sure. But I want to share it with you guys. Because I want to normalize. Like you can still go out. Be human. But it doesn't mean you need to go out and just be drunk, passing out, twerking everywhere, acting crazy, being sloppy. Like, it's just a way to carry yourself. Like, you know, we're all human. It's okay. That's why there's clubs to enjoy life. But it doesn't mean you got to be partying every day. But if you want to go out once in a blue moon, go ahead. But eventually, as, you know, God shifts you more and more and more, you're not even going to want to be around that environment anymore because it's going to stop making sense to you. You know, so I'll never forget. I went out for my friend's birthday, like February, and it's like, mind you, this is like month three of my journey, and I'm just sitting in the club, like, what in the heck is going on right now? Like, and mind you, the old me would have been like five shots in, <laughs> like I was sitting there, like, oh my god, like this is what I was doing, like it just, yeah. And, and, like, it was very uncomfortable for me. So. <laughs> yeah. My mom died. I've been getting drunk. I'm sorry for your loss. Well, let me just say that. Um, like, I'm sorry for your loss, number one, but drinking is not going to, like, solve any of that, those pains. Like, all drinking is going to do is, like, deep you, uh, dig you into a deeper, deeper hole and a deeper, um, form of depression. And you have to catch a grip now before it's, like, too late. So, you might need to get some help, and that's okay if you need to you know, speak to a counselor, go get some professional help, speak to a family member, but drinking is not going to solve your problems. I promise. It, it's not. Like, if I can go back and change a lot of things that I've done while I was drunk, I definitely would have. I definitely wish I could. I don't regret things, but I wish I can go back and fix certain mistakes that I made off of liquor. Yeah. Hey, Bishop. Oh, you can't hear me? I mean, listen, like, whatever you people, like, I'm going to just say this. Like, if you want to drink, that's on you. What's for you is for you. What's for me is for me. I can't tell you what to do. Is That's you, between you and God. Like, you figure out what it is that you don't need to be doing. Like, everybody's testimony is different. Everybody's journey is different. But for me liquor was something that I was battling so you know 